What's up, folks? We are back. It's Oscars time. We did Oscar predictions for the nominations. We broke them down. We're here. We got to do predict the real ones. I'm here. Zach's here. We brought back um, the legendary guest, Caleb Go. Hey, uh, unofficial third host of the Untitled League <laughs> Zach podcast, Caleb Go. Basically, basically, at this point, yeah. yeah. If, we have, if we got Oscar stuff to do, we need Koho on. Um, we're going to jump right into it. Oscars are Oscars. That's what that's what that's what it is. Oscars corresponded. Um, so we're gonna go through all the categories in order. A um, little bit of a bet here. We're doing uh, three picks per category. Picking a winner. Picking an upset pick. Picking a no shot. The way it's gonna work is if your winner wins, you get two points. If your upset pick wins, you get one point. If your no chance pick wins, you lose two points. Because we want to trust ourselves in the people we think are going to win and the people we think are going to lose. Let's jump right in. We're going to start with Best Supporting Actor. So we all have the same winner. We all picked Daniel Kaluuya to win. Yeah, we're not crazy people. <laughs> Caleb and I picked Sasha Baron Cohen as our upset. Yeah. Zach picked Paul Racy. Uh, Coho picked Paul Racy as his no shot. Yeah. I picked Leslie Odom Jr. as my no shot. Ooh. And Zach picked Lakeith Stanfield as his no shot, Ooh. which might be the smart pick. I don't know if that is the smart pick. So I'll, I'll go with the smart go first. person. Sasha Baron Cohen to me feels like the clear runner up in this category just because a lot of times when it gets to these categories, the upset pick is about which movie could potentially overperform. If a movie in this category is going to overperform, it feels like Trial of the Chicago 7 could do a lot better than we expect, and then Sasha just kind of gets pulled along for that. I picked Leslie Odom Jr. as last because I just think that movie is really kind of dead on arrival. It has very little buzz. It has very little nominations. There's not there's not a wave is not going to crest for that movie. I think that movie at this point is basically like song and yeah. That it's kind of it's kind it's kind it's one of those movies that like it's coming in here, it kind of has one category, and it's not really a player anywhere else. Um I thought about Racy, but I could see a push for that movie, maybe. And Lakeith feels like maybe there's a random situation where people like Lakeith more than Daniel Kaluuya. Um, so that's why I didn't uh, pick that one. Zach, why don't you explain uh, your two? Well, I mean, it's this starts with Daniel Kaluuya. He seems to have it in the bag. So that's like the sure thing you have to have. And I think because of the only worry about him not winning is he both both shares with Stanfield. Hmm. So there's no way they're going to vote share and Stanfield end up with the more. It's just not possible. So that that that's easy. I don't think he's going to get like the least votes necessarily, but I don't think there's any way that he can outbreak. Um, you know, Kalu is in the same movie. Um, and I just think Sound of Metal has much more fan base than I like thought beforehand. Anyways, we might be underrating it. And Paul Racy is one of the biggest takeaways for that movie, other than I think maybe sound and editing categories. Um, but but it's a performance that I can see people wanting to like go for the underdog. It isn't I don't think it's a chance. Um Kalu has it, but if, if something surprising happens, I could see that. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Koho, you picked <sighs> Sasha's the upset, which feels somewhat explanatory. I'm sure um, you can tell you if you agree with me or not. Um, and then you picked Racy as your no chance. Yeah. So my thing with the sporting edge categories, I don't think Odom's out of it. I that could be blind faith. That could also just be that in that stupid. The thing that really threw me off is the big variety, like exit interview thing they do every year. Always throws me for a loop. And there was a lot of one night love in it for the three categories, like as like a pushback at the low nominations. <clears throat> so I'm that freaks me out. That's why I won't put him as lowest. And Lakeith was being campaigned in lead and got nominated in supporting, which shows there's a huge grand swell, groundswell of people who are willing to give him an Oscar. So I would not put him in least likely if they're willing to put him in a category that he wasn't even campaigning for. Um, Racy, I think, is dead on arrival in terms. I think the nomination was the win for him. I think he got that BAFTA nom, and there was, like, goodwill for it, but I really don't see him winning. Sasha Baron Cohen, to me, honestly feels like a legitimate possible upset just because this is it. This is going to be the last shot Sasha Baron Cohen has as an, at an Oscar in both in the writing and acting categories, and I think he might win one of them. I just don't know which one it is. I think acting's not terribly out of the question, especially because Chicago 7 is a pretty well-liked film by the Academy. I, I I could see him walking away with the win, but I think this is Kaluuya's win. Kaluuya's already got the prior nomination. He's got the love. He's the up-and-coming actor that people love, so I think he's going to win that. Fair. Fair, 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 fair. Um, let's jump ahead. We got animated feature. 
a little bit less interesting of a category. Lock it up. It's done. <laughs> so we all picked Soul to win and uh, Wolfwalkers, if there is... Let's be real for a second. The Sasha Baron Cohen upset in supporting is probably like a 25%. The Wolfwalkers upset chance is probably like a 5%. Yeah. Um, Koho, you picked Shaun the Sheep, a, far, a Shaun the Sheep movie, Farmageddon, as your no shot. Zach, you picked Over the Moon. I picked what I thought was the smart pick, which is Onward, is that if if Soul doesn't win, they're not giving it to the other Pixar movie. There's clearly such yeah. a gap between the two of them that um, I think there's almost no chance that um, mm -hmm. that Onward wins. Um, was Over the Moon or Farm to Get anything more than just like those movies people don't care about? Sean the Sheep lucked into a nomination like i i'm gonna piss off doc if doc is watching because that's his favorite movie like of the animated bunch but like um i think that that everyone thought it was gonna be the croods that would just get the obligatory five spot so like i i think it's clearly the fifth in the category and that's fine good for it it's a two-time nominated franchise so good for sean the sheep yeah I, I i just picked a random one of the three that have no chance of winning and over the moon is something fair. no one talks about yeah that, that's totally fair um, let's jump ahead to a category that is a little bit interesting. Um, we all picked if anything happens, I love you. Oh yeah. I legitimately think that this could change before I might change my pick because we're doing this Oscar pool we're in right now is locked in after tonight. We have another Oscar pool that's locked in Sunday. I might, the picks could change between those two. Sure. Um, we all picked yes. People as no shot. That seems pretty self-explanatory. It, no one likes its odds. Um, we have, everyone has a different pick. For um, the upset, mm. Coho went I, Burrow. I, yeah, I went Umbra, the smart one, <laughs> and you went Genius Losa. Is what's the what's the take here? Is Burrow just a it's Pixar? Burrow is it's Pixar. Like if it's if any if it's not going to go to the one that has like deep emotional resonance with people and actual like commentary, it's going to go to Pixar. Pixar is either always the runner up or the winner. So I just pick Burrow. Fair. Zach, what about Genius Losa? Um, it just seemed like the outsiders pick. Um, it's like Burrow and the I can't remember titles anymore. I can't think I love you, whatever it's called. They seem like they're the same audience who might cancel like some of the votes out. They're gonna get the more traditional fans, and if there's a, like the hipster audience, gonna vote for the you know more ambitious reader animated one, then maybe that has a chance. But Burrow's probably the smart backup pick. I actually read a lot of other predictions and looked at other stuff. Opera seems to be very well liked, very popular, and legitimately might upset. Um, I, I it seemed to be the consistent runner up in a lot of things. Burrow seems to be. I think the thing with Burrow is that if the Pixar one, it feels like it has no buzz, and as a Pixar one, it should have more be more talked about than it is. And I think in some ways that might be a comment. The bigger um, Pixar one didn't get theory. nominated. The uh, bigger one didn't get nominated. Out wasn't out's not there, which was Is, their bigger short that year. Was Burrow before Onward? I think Burrow was before Onward and Out so, was, no, was Burrow was before Soul. Oh, yeah. Burrow was for, oh, Burrow was for Soul. Out, out was before Onward then. I think. Yeah, I think for me it just they, came out they, as well. Good. They released it separately though because you know it wasn't in theaters, so I think that hurts it too because there's just like an extra animation that appeared on the same day as Soul on the site. So how many people checked it in? Not the same that would have checked out these Pixar shorts in theaters. That's that's why Pixar doesn't have the advantage they normally do have. That's well, very true. Yeah. Well, Netflix has been really pushing. Yeah, that's why I, that's why I bet against um, Burrow is I just I didn't think it had the same advantage it would have from if everyone in the theaters had gone to see an eight hundred million dollar movie. With this in front of it. Sure, but the other thing to remember the shorts is no I don't know how many people actually like watch the shorts or give a shit when they go in to vote. Sure. They just I think they just look for oh well, which one's the Pixar one? Done. And they put a vote on it. So. Totally totally possible. Um let's jump ahead. We got original screenplay. So here's where it gets interesting. I Koho and me agree. We picked Promising a Woman to win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Zach picked Trial of the Chicago Seven, which it's I think are both very equal picks. Um and funny enough. Koho and I then picked as the upset, Trial of Chicago 7. Zach is his upset, picked Promising Young Woman. Yeah. Um, Koho and I agreed on Sound of Metal as our no shot. Zach picked Judas and the Black Messiah. I don't really think the no shot picks matter, to be honest. No. No. I think this is very much a two-person race. Oh, yeah. Um, it's really going to come down to, I think, uh, it's going to come down to a direct battle between 
Aaron Sorkin established screenwriter or a chance to reward Edward Emerald Fennell, who probably doesn't have a shot in director. No. But if they want to reward her, this is the category to do it. And like, I don't know, Sorkin. It's good. It's interesting. It's, I think it's actually a really interesting test of the two movies yeah. early on in the night to be like, which is the number two behind um, no, no. Nomadland? It really, because this is legitimately an argument to like, if one of them comes out consistently early on, you could be like, well, is there an upset brewing with one of these films? Oh yeah, no. I I think this is I think this category is literally neck and neck. I think this is literally just flip a coin. I know, like if you're trying to put logic to it, Promising Young Woman won the WGA, I guess. So that's why I that's why I gave it the advantage. But like, I think there's a lot of love for both movies, and they come from two totally different areas within the Academy. And it's going to be a it's going to be two different parts of the Academy fighting over which screenplay they like more. I think both scripts are phenomenal. Uh, so I think whoever wins, I'll be happy. And I think this is going to be the category that defines what is the best chance at beating Nomadland in future. I, I think um, the only reason I didn't go promising young woman is I think it that, that really depends on the younger vote. And weirdly enough, promising young woman has hit the big air backlash and trial has, which is kind of unsurprising sure. or it is sure. surprising. Um, that that can hurt the younger vote, especially the, the people that maybe want to be socially conscious about it. Um, and then Child by Chicago 7 has its fan base. It's going to get all the older voters. It's going to get all the lazy voters, the people that are, like, are frustrated with the year, just like Aaron Sorkin, of course, he wrote a great screenplay to give it to him. Um, and I, it has a lot of support. You see that in the nominations, and I think this is the one place that it can turn out right for them. I, th I think... I don't feel I good have... about it, but that's what they I both... <laughs> they both have backlashes, and they both have a lot of people that I think are going to put them very high and very low. I think that the the reason I put Promising Woman number one is I think that it its heat is a little bit hotter. I think the the fan base for it is a Stronger. little bit more passionate. Is a little bit more. Pa I don't know if it's just a larger fan base. I think they're just a lot more passionate about it. I think oh, there's yeah. a lot of. I think a lot of people, even the people who like Chicago Seven, are not necessarily like this is the greatest movie. This is amazing. I think there's a lot of people who are like. Aaron Sorkin made a good movie. Like, I think there's a lot more, I think there's a lot, even among the fan base, the hype is not necessarily as high. I think if you're a fan of Promising a Woman, your hype for that movie is really, really, really high. And it's burning. Like the passion doesn't matter. It's the quantity. It's not the quality of love. It's just the amount of people that think, uh, oh, the rest are fine and Aaron Sorkin wrote a good screenplay. Good is sometimes enough for people to vote for something. Sure. Sure. But like also in the category, if, if you are only like, Trials of Chicago Seven. There's potentially you pick another option because you like something else too, or I don't know. I just think that I think that the fan base for Promising a Woman is going to 100% vote there, and I think people who like Trials of Chicago Seven have a potential to maybe bleed off a little bit in another direction. True. But yes, I agree. Very close. Let's jump to another category. We got adapted screenplay. This is harder. This is tough. Um, <laughs> Coho and I agreed. We picked the father. Yeah. Zach picked No Man Land. I picked No Man Land as a backup. Zach picked the father as a backup. We all picked the white tiger as last, which I don't necessarily feel great about. I it. don't feel great no about that either. As a no shot pick, and then you picked Borat. I picked Borat. I like I like white tiger. I'm I, I haven't seen it yet. I'm excited. It's also like there's a reason it's in this category, yeah. and enough people like it to put it in here. But it has the guy's got a good rep. <laughs> it can't go with. Literally against top Oscar contenders, and this has nothing else. My my That's big thing of this category. category uh, my big thing of this category is that it is so wide open because the WGAs gave it to Borat, uh, which is why I picked it as my spoiler. I picked the father because the father is got this huge groundswell support, and I literally didn't pick it in any other category. And I think that's weird considering like how much people like that movie. So I gave it adaptive screenplay. I also hear a lot of love for Kemp Powers, who like not only just wrote that, but also wrote and directed soul with B doctor. He had a big year. I hear a lot of love for him doing one night. Uh, Nomadland was ineligible for the WGAs. So that's also a big thing to consider. D it could totally win. Um, but I also think that Chloe Zhao is winning director and picture. So they don't need to give her the writing Oscar. And that's why I think that the more I think about it, the more of a world I see where it's either the father or Borat walking away with that one, because Borat is a franchise they've never awarded. Sasha Baron Cohen's the person they've never awarded, but they clearly love him because they've nominated him for three Oscars in the last uh, 14 years. 
So I can see this being, we're going to give him his career Oscar and we're going to give Borat its career Oscar and adaptive screenplay. And also recognizing the impact that movie had this year and also the sort of risks they took in making it during mm-hmm. the pandemic. I feel like giving it screenplay, while I think its nomination in the screenplay is completely asinine and absurd, uh, is it, it winning that it feels like a congratulations, Borat. This is for you and this is for Sasha Ritten Carlin. I think there could really be a just a moment for Chloe Zhao of like the Academy one announcer is not just for best director, but as like one of our up and coming of tours. Um, it just seems sure. like 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 they want to make her part of the establishment. Right? That sounds real rude, but but just kind of anoint her as as someone serious to consider. So I, I just think that can go you know multiple ways. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the father is. It just seems like it's the underdog all the way through. Not not maybe the major player. Do a bong with her, you know? Yeah. yeah. She can be the, she the bong the, for this one. That's the argument, is that if, if she's going to win Oh, my gosh. Own. I was so confused. I was like, is Chloe Zhao, like, really in the pot? I was like, am I no. <laughs> no, do a bong with her. Annoyed her as this person who just, like, it randomly wins, like, four Oscars. Like I'm hitting a bong with her. You would say doing a bong because you know nothing about drugs. Do I know nothing? Who knows? We'll find out later. Um... <laughs> I'm a I got with Coho in that I think it, that people clearly like the father, and I think the only other chance is a maybe Hopkins win, maybe. But I feel like the, I feel like the best way to reward the father and not do something crazy and not have to and not require the voters to do something really crazy and like all and in a group randomly pick a, a person who does not who seems out of it is to give the father a screenplay. And then also, yeah, White Tiger. I would not be surprised if it won. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it is of all the no shot picks we had to bet. Of all the no shot picks, Vic, I think if I had that's the one I think is most likely to win. This Me category too. just it just feels weird. It's there for a reason. Sometimes weird movies win screenplays. There are you go back and look through the histories of screenplays. There are some weird movies that get one award and win screenplay and do not have a big, you know, they don't have a following. They don't really have a big name recognition overall, but they just slip in there with the screenplay. And people like the guy who did that. He's made some other movies. He did 99 Homes. People like – good movie, by the way. 99 Homes, good movie. Um, yeah. Let's jump ahead. Live action short. This one freaks me out. Really, I this is the short about it. I Gold Derby, thank you for your assistance, my friend. No, Gold, Gold Derby <laughs> has changed the winner three times in the last week. Yeah. Oh, because the thing. shorts are inca- like incapable for them to even predict. Sometimes I feel like the fifth pick has won in True. the past. I think right. I've settled on what I, who I think is going to win based on the premise of it and recent events. I think Two Distant Strangers is probably going to be the one that's the mm-hmm. most resonant and wins. But for the longest time, I thought it was the Oscar Isaac one with the letter room. I thought that was it. I thought that was going to win. So Oops. I flipped it now. That's my upset. Two Distant Strangers. Is the one we all picked to win. We all picked the letter room to upset. You guys picked white eye with no shot. I picked the present. I don't think the no shots really matter. I think this is no. very clearly a two, two short race. Um, yeah, I'll be honest. If this is one of these crap shoots. I, two distant strangers. Just a lot of people seem to think that's going to win. It, it's less my personal opinion or knowledge about the situation, and more just like I'm looking where the tide's going, and it looks to be going to two distant strangers. Yeah. yeah. Zach, any any thoughts? Um, didn't Van Lathan produce that? I just rooted for Van Lathan and, and the Ringer, um, to, 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 hey. get, to get some through. Um, all about it. Enjoy badass. I like some music. <laughs> That's why I picked this. <laughs> all right, that category we don't have a lot to say. Let's talk about, about production design. We all picked Mank to win, we all picked Ma Rainey's Black Bottom to finish the upset. You guys picked News of the World with no shot. I picked Tenant with no shot. Um, this doesn't – This I think we can sum this up as just being like it's the two movies that recreated the past the best. Yeah. And Mank is not going to win much else, so this kind of seems, like ca- seems like the Mank category, if we're being honest. This is – I don't think any of the like – I don't think Chicago 7 is going home empty-handed, and I don't think Mank's going home empty-handed, but I don't think they're walking out of there with more than one each. Mm-hmm. I think this is the place where Mank's walking out with one. Fair. Um, yeah. Why do you guys say News of the World? News of the World is just like was kind of dead on a run. That one hurt. I will say that is the one that I wrote down as no shot that hurt the most because I love News of the World, but like that's not that movie's not winning anything. 
like the, they didn't care enough about it. They were like, they gave it the four areas where they think it was really good enough to recognize that it should have been nominated. But it, I, it is the world's not winning anything, so I just put it as less on that one. There, it's kind of my take on Tenant. The yeah. studio really didn't really want to even. They didn't really outside of visual effects. They didn't really even want to show it. They didn't just, care. Yeah, I just they think basically like a the director started fighting the studio during an Oscar campaign. Not yeah. usually a good sign. I think there's a like a modernness though in Tenant that. Uh, news of the world does not have news of the world is just like very traditional in a lot of ways i don't think people are gonna like go out of their way to like think it was the best production design it's just kind of yeah. like what hollywood has done for decades fair yeah fair fair all right let's jump ahead costume design um why are these black bottoms winning this is it um i feel pretty confident yeah i i didn't i'm not confident either. i i, I don't not. remember her name so i, I i'm gonna plead uh ignorance here I believe the costume designer for My Rennie's Black Bottom is a well-regarded industry professional, long Probably. career, hasn't won before. I believe oh, really? this is similar to the Black Panther one from a couple years ago. Okay, but where, hold on. Black Panther also deserved it. Don't, don't come no, to me like that. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that when you get somebody who has done great work in a category for a long period of time and you have an opportunity to reward them, they quite often reward them. Anne Roth has already won once. She won for um, the English Patient in 97. Oh, maybe I'm wrong then. Okay. Um, get your you guys, shit together, Lucas. I'm a, my apologies. My deepest applause. You guys picked Emma as a runner-up. I picked Mank as a runner-up. Um, mm. And that's purely just in the size of the film. Emma probably has better costumes. I just think that if you're going to upset Ma Rainey's, it's not going to be for some random movie that has only one, uh, one award. That's just my uh, thing My thing is Emma is costumes. And that's what scares me. Is That's the yeah. one thing that movie has had since it came out. The costumes are the movie. And that's how it's been since February. And it's like, honestly, even in the odds, it's almost neck and neck. I take Ma Rainey because it won the precursor, I think. But yeah. Emma, Emma is the one that you can look and go, oh yeah, great yeah. costumes without ever watching the movie. Sure. I, I need more research on how people vote for this because it's kind of like a quality over quality. Like for Ma Rainey, you're pretty much voting for one dress. Like you're voting for yeah. what Viola Davis is wearing, and Emma's more the like quantity of the work. Like it's just full of great clothes, you know, going around it in period pieces. So I, I just gotta figure out how where people's minds are. I think on how they vote. I honestly I mean, feel like this is one where I might switch it to Emma later, but for now I'm sticking with Marie. You guys picked Pinocchio in last. I picked Mulan in last. Um, I, I wouldn't count Mulan out entirely. I think it's not gonna win, but I think I Pinocchio is not as weird. Can I this think be that, our that movie is toxic. Losers? I'm caught it now. The losers have to watch Pinocchio, which is great because I was going to watch Pinocchio anyways. Um, no, we're not doing this. The bad. We have. I have. A, I have a plan that will not be announced until later. I don't like that. I get zero say ever because I know this is not going to be the curious Benjamin <laughs> Button commentary that I wanted. Weirdly, it does relate to commentaries. Um, we already made this bet like a month ago, and you just don't remember it because your memory I don't know, sucks. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> No, but Pinocchio's nomination makes no fucking sense, and I'm just totally okay with putting that in the last place. But that's the reason why I won't put it last, because because the fact that the movie got nominated tells me that that somewhere somebody likes it. Mulan just got nominated because it's Disney, it's a big budget. Also, that movie's toxic, because it's really, people are going to have trouble voting for a movie that basically thanks people committing genocide in it. It's not a good look. That movie's going to have a, I think that movie is toxic. I think it's lucky it got nominated, to be honest. But yeah, this this could Emma change. I think the, okay, the argument against Emma is, It's been out for 13 months. It's the only award it got. If this movie had so much support behind it, something else would have happened. Like that's the only, that's my biggest argument against it. Is it just the movie has no buzz behind it? I mean, the the, the buzz it does have is for the thing it got nominated for like severe buzz for that. Like if we're going to talk about length of time, get out and black Panther both went almost a full year from release to Oscar nominations and got those movies are massive comparison to Emma. Sure, but also Emma suffered from being released right at the start of the pandemic, and we still got it a nomination a year later, and The Invisible Man didn't get anything, and that was Fair. bigger. I just think that, yeah. okay, my biggest argument would be if if Ma Rainey's loses this category, Viola and Chadwick should be scared. They should be very scared. Because if, if Ma Rainey's starts losing down ballot, that's a sign that, that it, the movie is not strong. Um, I think Viola should than it, be scared. I think Bozeman has no chance of losing this. But I disagree with that one. Well, I think Davis should already be scared because she's not really winning it right now anyway. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's talk about one that was up in the air and seems more solidified now. Documentary feature. Well picked. 
My octopus teacher to win, the mole agent to no shot. We all have a different pick for upset. I'm gonna oh, let us really? talk about this. Yes, Zach picked collective. Zach, what's the argument for collective? Is the upset pick to my? You, I originally had this as my favorite to win just for that because I think documentaries often have um, our chaos age in a lot of ways. It's always kind of an unexpected one for me. Um, you talked me out of it. Um, so thank you. But uh, I still be collective <laughs> just with the with the double nomination. I think sometimes can be a, a flag of interest. It definitely has a lot of fan base because it got an international well. But you also showed me that that happened last year. They still did not Ireland, win, yeah. you know, best doc on your land. Um, but I still think that means there is a lot of love for the movie that exists. I think if it doesn't win, it's definitely in the top three vote counts. Yeah, probably. I mean, it's also massive. It's tiny sample size in either direction. Either as a Honeyland it's also is a, not a predictive a very resonant one that a lot of people think it might be one of sure. the more important films of the year. Yeah. All right, Coho, you picked time as your upset pick. To me, time's been the front runner since documentary feature started this year. And I thought that's why I thought it was going to get snubbed, but it got the nomination. So I was like, oh, there you go. It's going to win. They took out the real winner in my mind, Boy State. And then, um, and then my octopus teacher won the precursor documentary and it's won everything else. So to me, it feels like free solo versus like, um, mining the gap where, mm -hmm. or, or RBG, where it was like, this is the, the resonant culturally documentary. And then this is the really well done nature doc that people like. And I think my octopus teacher is going to win, but I think time could pull the upset where they're like, we're not doing free solo again and flip it. Mm. So. I will say, if you read those anonymous Oscar ballots, they were not a fan of time. Fair. They were very, very negative on it. Um, actually, the reason I picked Crip Camp as my runner up, yeah, because, well, first off, it has the Obama factor, which I yeah, think certainly cannot hurt. And secondly, <laughs> Netflix has done very well in documentary. Now, my octopus teacher is also a bump. Absolutely. I just, the argument, I, I, I see collective. I think also, I would, until I see that as a predictive factor, I think getting two nominations doesn't mean anything. I think the biggest argument against time is that it, 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 it came in as the front runner and then it, it fell off a cliff. Like, that's valid. It, it just, to me, uh, to me, Crip Camp makes more sense as the film that jumps over it. I think I think the thing is, at sometimes it's about what movie everyone can enjoy, and I feel like a lot of people, nobody's going to have like a big beef with My Octopus Teacher or Crip Camp. There clearly are people who have a beef with Todd. I mean, I don't like the I don't like the movie much myself. I have pretty big problems with it with the way that they choose to yeah. show the narrative. I think it's somewhat dishonest at times. I, I think they don't touch on. Um, the full story. I think there are, there are pieces of it that are left out in order to make a certain case, which I find somewhat dishonest, intellectually dishonest. And I think that there are other people out there who are seeing it. Also, famously, the like the the Critics' Choice documentary very, very, very rarely wins. That's true. Like they quite often. I mean, in some ways, time following that record is lucky to get in. Um, but yeah, My, who knew? I mean, who knew when we we did those nominations? My octopus teacher was going to basically like like solidify as a clear front runner. You know, just, just seeing my that. octopus teacher is the winner or like the purported winner just makes me so sad that Boy State's not here because I think that's the best documentary in the array a lot. I was talking about this with Zach the other day. I think that I think Boy State. No, big time. would have been my pick. But... I think 2020 is the worst year on earth for Boy State to come out in. That's true. Because it's a year where we're already scared about politics, and you see a movie that has a bunch of scary stuff about the next generation. I think that movie scares people. Out. I think it's the same reason that none of the COVID docs got nominated. I think people are like, I will stay. Oh, here's my 15 foot pole. I would like to stay five of these away from the, those stuff like that. I That's think it's just, it's just scary in a year. And I think in some ways, you, my octopus teacher is running the table because it's an octopus and his teacher is kind of cute little nature documentary and doesn't scare you about the world, about the future of the world. Um, That's excuse true. me. You're, you're beating my joke. But. Um, <laughs> If I had to say scary, it's the one is my octopus teacher. What's happened to our world that now our schools are being run by octopus? There's been some kind of water invasion. The sea levels rose so high, the octopus Aquaman. have to take residency in our classrooms. It's, it's Aquaman world, Zach. Let's yeah. be real for a second. Water you would world. love, you would love, love, love to teach with a bunch of if your entire teaching colleagues were octopus. Um, it would be uh, a lot better than it is now, yes. <laughs> <laughs> <That's not ideal. laughs> 
<laughs> all right, let's jump ahead. Documentary short. We this all picked. Right. We all picked a love song for Latasha to win. A concerto was a conversation for upset. Coho and I picked a hunger ward for no shot. Zach picked do not split. It's a two person race. I legitimately think I might switch my pick by Sunday. Me too. I, I've seen a. I've seen several outlets predict a concert as a, a concerto as a conversation to win and not have a love song for Latasha as runner up. I, mm. I don't. I don't know what they're seeing. These are really hard. But I do think that there's an argument. Both of those, I think, have an argument for them. There's I, I always good. predict doc short doc based on the name, because I think the name is like again. If I'm an Oscar voter and I don't have time to watch the shorts, I'm just gonna look at what name is the coolest and check it. And a love song for La- Latasha and a concert as a conversation or concert as a conversation are the two coolest names on that ballot. Okay. And it's and it's like a really close race. I personally think I might also flip to concerto. Because I again, I think that name is more flashy, but I also have no idea what either one is about. And if people who actually care about the short docs are voting on like s- substance, then I might need to reevaluate what they're about before I like solidify my action. They're weirdly similar. They're both Fair. like reimagining of interaction with them? people. No, I just read basic descriptions sure. of the two. Films. I will be watching them on Saturday. <laughs> should I'll we watch do them. a doc watch. show next year? Next year we should do or all the shorts. Sad doc show, sorry, a short show. We're gonna do a short That'd episode. Cool. We could do a short show. Not this year. No time for that. Yeah. I mean, if we wanted to do that, we probably should have started planning like a couple weeks ago. <laughs> probably. And that was the last time when we did four podcasts in a week because we forgot we just wanted to do it. Yeah. I mean, I think these. I think these. These two shorts. What makes it complicated is that these two shorts felt the similar mode of they are personal, emotional. Those tend to get. Those tend to get wins. Yeah. Um. And the fact that they are somewhat similar to each other, at least in really, I mean, I'm, I'm talking really broad terms here. I'm not saying that the stories are going to be, they have similar, I think, appeal. And I think that's what makes it complicated to predict. Sure. Um, let's talk about another award that is really solidified over the last month and not to the person we thought it was going to solidify to. Um, Yoon Young Jung from Minari is all, is all the person we're all picking to win. Yeah. You guys are picking Maria Bakalova to upset. Yeah. I am picking Glenn Close to upset. Oh, you saw him, bitch. You're, you're a psycho. He's not, he's not out of his mind. With that. I'm not crazy. <laughs> I, I think he is a. Uh, here's the thing: if Maria Bakalova was going to win, she'd be the favorite right now. Glenn Close is the perfect upset pick because she was never no. going to be the favorite the whole way through. But if she's going to win this award, she's going to come out of nowhere at the last moment. Um, Zach picked Olivia Coleman as. He's no shot. Ooh. I feel horrible about I just, that. And I, 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 I think that made it 10 minutes ago. That we scares me. Did, that one scares yeah. me as well. We and Coho, I think, made the correct pick, which is Amanda Siegfried, who I has literally been, who is, let's be real for a second, got lucky. You also mentioned out her name, so just all the disrespect. She got lucky. Let's, not, be, let's, let's be real for a second. We know, we Roy. almost talked, we almost talked ourselves out of her getting a nomination. During our nominations podcast, like I think she was kind of lucky to just get into the category at this point. Well, Mank no. is not, Mank does not have a lot of buzz behind it. If we're just being completely honest, no, it's, it's kind of dead on the water. It's sort of, it's honestly, it's like Irishman, but has less hype behind yeah. it. Yeah, my my thing with supporting actress is this is a category that I don't think is super, super set. Mm-hmm. And also not super far apart between how close everyone is. Like, I think Seyfried's at the bottom, but I also think that there's like a one in a hundred shot she could make a upset. Like, but I also think Col- there's a shot Coleman wins. Like, there's a good yeah. shot Coleman wins. There's a good yeah. shot Baklova wins just because, like, the story she has is still there. People still like that story. Yeah. They love that. It's the Rami Malik story. It's everything. It's the – and then there's also the – um, Glenn Close it, appeal of finally giving her her Oscar that will always be there as long as she's alive and getting nominations. But I think uh, Yoo Jung Yoon is uh, is the performer that everyone has sort of. It, the Minari wave has benefited her more than anyone else from that movie, where everyone goes, "We love Minari. We can't give it an Oscar in this category, this category, any of these because it's so stacked. We'll give her this one because this field is wide open and she's great." And I also think she's the best performance of the five. But like. We- we talked about this with the father in adapted screenplay. Yeah. If they don't give the Oscar to her, they're not giving Minari an Oscar. Right. So like this is in some ways, I think she benefited because the movie got a bump after the nominations, but not enough of a bump to make it a player in most category. Yeah. So she was kind of like the the person who, and also she kind of got lucky because 
Baklova has a good story, Great but story. she's but she's not in a name. And also, I think there is an argument from some people like, well, I mean, if she's really good, we'll give her an award. Somebody, I think close is Coleman to me feels scary because I do think legitimately the father could have more hype than we think it does. I and think it has a lot more hype than I think. It I does. mean, she upset Glenn Close a couple years ago when everybody thought Glenn Close was going to win. Yeah, like legitimately, Glenn Close was locked in. She looked like the favorite, and Olivia Coleman went up there. It was a great speech. Well, Olivia Coleman Olivia was like Coleman. actually literally the favorite, but we didn't know that yet. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. A terrible and, joke. And her, her, said Olivia Coleman the favorite by her name the entire race. What were we thinking? Uh, that's it's true. It's true. Yeah, I think it's an interesting category. Um, I, 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 I just, Coleman, again, I think, we, honestly, probably should be my upset pick, but I also just think there's a lot of love for Maria Baklova. And again, I think they want to give the Borat franchise something, mm -hmm. and this is also an easy one to give it to if they're not going to give it screenplay and they're not going to give Sasha the other acting Oscar, then this is the closest thing they can do. See, it's the thing. I don't think they're going to... I don't think that argument works in this category because you have the same argument made for Minari... And I think Minari has more push behind it. I agree, which is why Black Love is my upset. Fair. And I think Close is the upset just because I think that – I think Close is going to be an upset. She's going to be the upset pick in literally every category like this until she wins one or actually sure. does a legitimately great movie with a performance I, up that's uh, – with, yeah. with her performance is worthy. It's in it. Her problem recently has been like she's going close. She's a very talented person. She just keeps picking super subpar. That's my heart. That's my heart. That's my hard thing is the exit interviews also said there was no fucking way they were giving an Oscar to Hillbilly Elegy, which they said was the worst movie of the year. Like, and if Glenn, and I think Glenn Close, if Glenn Close wins the Razzie for her performance and then wins the Oscar for her performance, it'd be the first time that it ever happened ever. So, yeah. all right, let's jump ahead. We got Best Sound, which they finally killed the two categories. Yeah, I um, really like. I really liked predicting editing and mixing as different things, but fair. In shocking fashion, we picked the Sound of Metal. Maybe the, one, maybe the sound the category should go the one with sound in the title. <laughs> it's a good joke. Um, it's also going to read the best metal. It does. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, so upset picks is where we differ. Koho and I picked Soul. Zach picked Greyhound. Koho oh and I God. picked Greyhound. Zach. Koho and I picked Greyhound is oh, no shot. Hair. No <laughs> shot to win. It's a movie on Apple TV Plus that no one has it's seen and sound. no one cares. And then you picked News of the World. Has no shot, which I think has more of a shot than Greyhound. I agree, but I, at the end of the day, Tom Hanks movies are not winning sound. It's over. I don't think so either, but I also think that like if they're going to give it to one of them, they're going to give it to the yes. one that played in theaters and was directed by Greengrass. All Greengrass, rather than the one that was directed by give I don't know one who. in theaters. So are they giving only News of the World awards then? Because none of these are played in theaters. I'm seeing young women played in theaters. <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, some of them are played in theaters. I mean. Also, there's a big difference between not playing in theaters and playing on Prime or Netflix and not playing in theaters and playing on Apple TV Plus. Yeah, which hey, Wolf Walkers is going to win, and I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, but Wolf Walkers, <laughs> Wolf Walkers is only succeeding in a category because there's literally like five or six options for the entire category. There's literally only seven options, and two of them suck. <laughs> like, Yeah. So I think that's... I'm gonna be honest. I think it's sound of metal. I think there's very little chance of an upset in that category. So even like discussing yeah. the winner ups is not that interesting. Sound of metal is winning that category. That's one of the more locked in. I think one yeah. of the most locked in of the category. If it's not gonna go to sound of metal, it'll go to the animated movie that did a lot of cool things. So I'm and the ones now actually rooting for Greyhound. I fucking hate that movie, but if it wins, I get to like hold so much over your ass. Oh my god. Okay. Will be the most right effect. All right. <laughs> Cinematography. This is tight. So we all picked Nomadland. We picked Mank as an upset pick. Um, Coho picked Judas and the Black Messiah has no shot. I said News of the World had no shot, and Zach said the Trials of Chicago Seven no shot. Right, Can I right. say why both of your no shots are less likely than mine? Okay. The cinematographers attached to them. Darius Wolski's first nomination in his career, I feel like, is a Never big deal. Of them. Well, he's he's shot like The Martian, the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Sure. He's shot a lot of um, big deals in Hollywood, and sure. this is his first nomination, so like it, it feels like very much like a career. And, and uh, Feed and Papa Michael has been around for the last decade doing great work, like literally just shot Ford v Ferrari, like has been doing great work. Uh, so I, I, I can see, I see why they nominate him. The nomination is the win, I just don't think they're out of it the way Judas is, where Judas is like an absurd nomination for cinematography, and like the person attached to it, it's like the first thing they've ever really done, which okay, is also kind of weird. 
I will push back. That makes say, it absurd it. just because they haven't been nominated. They have to be a known fan. No, no, it's it's not like your two, known. which are like veterans that are well known in Hollywood. I was just like, oh, I don't, I, I never heard his name. So cinematography sucks. No, I will say this: I mean. you guys picked no shot of movies that are nominated for best picture. I picked the no shot of a movie that is nominated for like three technical categories and nothing else. That was a hundred percent the fact that Nose of the World is the non best picture nominee That's in a valid. category. I'm picking it to have no shot because why would they nominate it? It's not part of the conversation for the entire award show. I think Trial of Chicago Seven probably has a better shot than um, Judas in the Black Messiah just because it's a bigger film. But yeah. like, I was a I think this is probably that should have been nominated because it's not a good cinematography and it's yeah. also just very inert. Like it's just in a it's pretty boring. It's not doing that much. Yeah, it looks like a TV movie. More interesting talk here is that everyone here picked Nomadland despite it losing the precursor to Mank. But like, and I think yeah, that I comes see. down to that comes down to the Oscars aren't necessarily the same people who vote on the precursors. Yeah, um, they are, but and they aren't. And I, th- well, I can see Eric Messerschmidt. I can see Eric Messerschmidt winning for Mank because mm. like it's a very well shot movie. It's black and white. They usually go for that. But Nomadland also is like it's basically this is the battle of the two kinds of cinematography winners: the artsy black and white. We did some cool like grading and gorgeous establishing right, right. landscape shots. It's Revenant versus Artist. Who's gonna win? Like, yeah. I mean, I think yeah. it's also just like I think it also just comes down. It's another battle between like. I, I mean, it's, this is actually an interesting category in so much as what does it say about the overall Oscar narrative? If Mank pulls it out over Nomadland, maybe Nomadland is a little bit more vulnerable than we thought. Maybe True. potentially. Best picture, maybe I don't know, like what that says because Nomadland doesn't have necessarily a ton of nominations to begin with. Um, for me, that just came down to I know that Mank won the precursors. I just think Nomadland is the more it's the film with the more push. It's got the better. It's got the better. Like it just seems like it has more people behind it. Um, and yeah. the thing is with the precursors is when it goes from the precursor to the Oscars, it's all the tech people plus all the regular people. Maybe the tech people like Mank more than Nomadland. But does rando actor number 12 pick the movie that doesn't have a lot of buzz or the movie that has a lot of buzz and is the clear front runner? And not that this is necessarily on all voters' minds, but Nomad Land cinematography being you know so much more connected to the ideas and themes and, and actual effectiveness of that movie, um, I, I think just helps. Like I think people realize that the cinematography is such a big plus and what makes that movie work. The landscapes okay. and America. Yep. All right, let's jump ahead. We got film editing. Um, this is such a tight race. Zach and Caleb picked Trials of Chicago Seven. Yeah. I picked Sound of Metal. Then I picked Trial as my runner-up. You guys picked Sound of Metal as your runner-up. And me and Caleb picked The Father as last place. And Zach picked Promising a Woman. I will say, I think Promising a Woman is much more likely than The Father. I think I don't know. I can see them doing the father because that's once again that's what makes it work. I think people appreciate the fluidity of that and how that makes like it's important to the story. So I just I, I can flashy. see people going for it. Welcome it's to editing. They get a, Bohemian Rhapsody. I don't won. think it's flashy I because think it's, it's flashy. Not, I don't think it's that flashy. I think it's unnoticeable. No, I think Trial is the book pro wrap of this. I, I, I think Trial Chicago 7 is also really well edited, but again, we always find our I editing. I don't think it is, but I think it is the bow wrap of these nominations. The reason why I pick and... Trial is because Sorkin's movies usually get the editing nom, and the ones that are really in the contention for picture win the editing Oscar. Social Network won both screenplay and film editing. Because his, his screenplays are dependent on editors that are really good at cutting things the way he does them. And, like, he gives a lot of room for the editors to do that. So I see Trial winning. I think this is the one that I really think it has a good shot to walk away with, especially after it won the Ace Eddie. Um, but Sound of Metal is the one that people keep saying, this is where we're giving a Sound of Metal one. And I don't see it. Like, I don't think Sound of Metal is very well edited. And, like, it's I think... on the sound. Part. Right, I, and I so I, up it too. yeah, I don't think Sound of Metal is going to win, but if but people love Sound of Metal enough that I could see them going, oh, Sound of Metal is supposed to win this, so we vote for it, and that's where it upsets. But I think this is where Trial gets its Oscar. Fair. I don't necessarily love either, either editing job, to be honest. I think it's a it's weird that these are the two finalists for a category. I like the editing of Sound of Metal. I think it's not noticeable, which is good, but it's not what people vote for. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Um, let's jump ahead. We got visual effects. We all picked Tenet to win. Midnight's got to go second. 
Uh, Caleb and I picked the one and only island has no shot. You picked Love and Monsters. I don't really think there's that much to say about this category. I, I think you, you have one movie. You have one movie that literally is on any scale yeah. that people have heard of it and slash seen it. Like people haven't seen the Midnight Sky or the one and only island. These movies, like they, no one talks about these. They just have such a small profile to begin with. I think in some ways that Tenet is winning almost 100% based on the fact that it is the Christopher Nolan movie that everyone has heard of. It's, ten, it's winning because it's Tenet, and I think Tenet wins I don't think it. it doesn't but, win. It's insane. Yeah, I think Tenet's going to win, but I also can see Midnight Sky winning because Midnight Sky beat Tenet at the visual effects precursor for the big crazy. award, which Why? is kind of crazy. And also the Oscars <laughs> love to give it to the space movie. They love space yeah. movies in the visual effects Oscars, so I can see it going to Midnight Sky, but I'm going to pick Tenet because I think basically this is like an Inception versus First Man Oscar race. Between the two, except it's like significantly worse than both those movies' visual effects. So, I just realized I made a, you know, I made a I, mistake. Yeah, I feel like I should have picked Midnight Sky because that's the Lucas pick every year in our Oscar pool. Is I'm the guy who goes, "Hey, dumbasses! Endgame or Infinity War isn't going to win. It's going to be this this small indie movie you haven't heard of." Um, I I think the effects nerds don't vote for Tank because supposedly it's like really easy what he did, but still very impressive. But the effects nerds are saying like, oh, anyone could do that. Is is, but may not vote for it. But the average, you know, movie goer, the average voter, like, mm. so still so cool shit. It doesn't matter if it was easy to do. It's still, you know, stuff that you haven't seen before, and it's exciting. Yeah, I think the thing is, I think the thing is for Tenet, probably the best thing it has going for it is like in the past years, Endgame lost, but it lost to 1917, a Best Picture nominee. Yeah. Infinity War lost, but it lost to First Man, who was a movie that people had heard about. You was know, a based. prime best picture contender. Blade Runner, yes, book, Ex Machina. I think that I think the biggest problem here for this is I would typically pick against the big one, but Tenet is the movie that you pick against the big one to pick. Yeah, like, there isn't another movie in this category that has any like Inception I, one. Like this is Interstellar the, one. The, yeah. Yeah, there's like I, th Nolan. I think there's a precedent Nolan's for Nolan winning. When yeah. Nolan is nominated in visual effects, he us he's won this decade. Especially so. considering there's nothing else in this category that is a best picture high level movie that people would go. It's not there's no oh, other high profile game. nominees in this category besides Tenet. Uh, great. Let's jump ahead. Makeup and hairstyling. Ma we all picked Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Um, Coho and I picked Hillbilly Elegy as a runner up. Zach picked Pinocchio. Zach picked Mank is no shot. I picked Pinocchio is no shot. And Caleb picked Mank is no shot. I think the no shots don't really totally matter. I think Ma Rainey's going to win. I think this is the one that like Ma Rainey's getting out with an Oscar. But if it doesn't, it's going to be, be because they gave it to the most makeup, not necessarily the best makeup. And that's Hillbilly Elegy. Yeah. So. Yeah. I now picked Pinocchio. Pinocchio Army's going to rise. I picked Pinocchio as last. I picked Pinocchio as last because I just think no one cares. Yeah, no one gives a shit. I, no I, I think it. that I think it Mank as a last pick is not a great one, just because would it surprise me if a movie that doesn't really deserve it for it wins just because it's the highest profile in that category? That wouldn't mm. necessarily surprise me. Mank could win. A, Mank could come from the fourth place and win a lot of these tech categories just on the fact that it's a really big movie that has a lot of nominations. Pinocchio's like half the half the people voting haven't heard of this movie. Like, yeah. that's the reason I would just never pick. I, that's why I would always pick against it. Like, just here's the thing. Pinocchio's nose gets really long. And the thing is, people's noses don't get that long. That's all That's all makeup, my friend. This is wow. a terrible bit right here. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> I, I, I think this category is great. It worked. You have yeah. It's my race. All right, let's jump ahead to another category that's pretty clearly got a winner. No, another, round, another round is winning international feature. Um, It's director got a best director. Now, that's basically that's, the closest. Yeah. Kiss um, that. Where we disagree is you guys picked Better Days as No Shot. I picked The Man Who Sold the Skin. I don't really think those matters. No. Um, uh, Coho and I picked Cuivadas Ada as runner-up. Zach picked Collective. Yeah, Collective Army. Oh, I picked Collective. <laughs> um, I, thought I, I don't really think it matters. I, I think I think if I, international feature is usually somewhat predictable. Very predictable. It's usually like well, it's it's because every time it happens, it's five movies, four of them. 98% of people have never heard of, and one movie people have heard of. And another round has Venturberg and Mickelson, which is way more clout than any of the other films. Which, have. the last time they were nominated in this category, they got fucked. So, uh, oh, they, right. they got fucked. The Hunt lost, which is bullshit. 
So like this, I feel like this is almost a makeup for the hunt. I will say though, the reason the last couple of years are so predictable is because the foreign winner was also nominated for best picture, and that's well, not quite the best a, director. A fantastic yeah. woman was also kind of a predictable win. So was the the salesman, just because yeah. of like what the international feature usually goes with where we are in international politics and what's going on in the world. So they usually follow those countries and those topics pretty closely. That, yeah, that could be Kovadis. I can't pronounce that. That's the one that's more the most Sure, but another another round is just like the hey Vinterberg rocks, and we've never given him an Oscar. <laughs> to be fair, if you look since if you look since 2010, basically every director except the director of Son of Soul is a named director from an international perspective, and Vinterberg fits into the Paolo Sorrentino yeah. Oscar for Hadi, Sebastian Lilio, Alfonso Cuarón. Some of my favorites. He he fits into that like Denmark's uh, favorite son, Thomas Vinterberg. Yeah, okay. and there's Parks and Mag Crowd rules. Give it to Vinterberg. Also, to be fair, he's probably helped by the fact that you've never heard of any of these other directors. No, they're not names. There's no, they're like maybe also meta, meta gaming this. They have all those hubs, right? They set up a hub in Denmark. <laughs> like they didn't set one up in any of the other countries. They set one up in Denmark. So well, that's good to get the director too. That's that's yeah. probably a pretty good sign. Um, I think this is actually one of the categories that got like most hit by COVID secret. Because of like the lack of con, where a lot of these would premiere, I think a lot of the big name foreign directors that were, would have had films got pushed to this year. That's true. Sure, sure. Uh, let's talk original score. We all picked Soul to win. Um, Koho and I picked Mank as an upset. Zach picked Minari. You guys picked The Five Bloods as no shot. I picked News of the World. I'm going to tell you this right now, you guys. That was a bad no shot pick. People like The Five Bloods. You guys picked a five buzz. It's no shot. That's a bad pick. There are movies in this category that have no buzz. If people, there is a, I'm not saying it's a good shot. I'm saying I would bet. I think you're getting personal bias. You get a little you're personal bias. Good so good the fact that, let's be honest, Soul's winning. Soul's not no, no, losing no, no, no. this award. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying, I, I think Soul will win. I'm just saying. I would feel way better about betting on Defy Bloods to win than I would feel on News of the World, just because. There's a there is an you if you want people want to get mad about Defy Bloods, voting for Terrence Blanchard is your way of getting mad about yeah. Defy Bloods. No one's gonna get mad about news of the world and vote for that in score. Like I think it's I just, just in terms of this isn't strategy for the game, but strategy for how you look on this podcast is the more aggression you put to, put to making our no shots seem like like these incredibly ridiculous picks, you're Really, ninety nine percent. You're the one that comes out looking like an asshole because most likely ah. they're not winning. Like we have a four and five shot of these not winning, and you're basically making this like your secret pick in a way with how adamant you are that these are bad like, picks. They have to win or else you seem like a dick. Like uh, Minari's <laughs> a good choice for runner up. I pick Mank because like Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross are double nominated for a reason. Both their scores this year are great. They're gonna give it to Soul because John Batiste is equally great, and those three did a great job. But if it's not gonna go to Soul. It's still gonna go to Reznor and Ross for Mank. Like it's them gonna win. So I, yeah. I really just picked the I picked the one person. Defy Blood's got a singular nomination here, which means it has really no shot at winning that category. So I give it back. Yeah, I don't think canceling yourself out theory is always a reality, but just in case it is a reality, that's why I think I remember Nari as my second and not Mank. Just like because they might cancel each other out. Or did I pick Mank? I have no idea what I picked. I didn't no, you picked Minari. Minari. You picked Minari, which I think okay. is is the argument. I I think it's I think the canceling out argument is better. If we it's actually also thought, Man I think I think it's a better argument if you think Mank and Soul are close. I don't think they are, so I think the I'm not as worried about the canceling out as I might be in another scenario. I'm using it as an argument against Mank, like I yeah. use the supporting actor as an argument against like Keith Stanfield, not an argument no, against fair. Kaluuya. I mean, yeah. sorry, I mean, I did the same thing in animated when I picked Onward to have no shock because they're not going to yeah. split and let Onward. Um, let's jump ahead. Original song. This is so tight. We all oh, picked yeah. Speak Now to win. Who's the Vic to upset? Caleb and I picked Hear My Voice to lose to No Shot. Zach picked Fight for You. I yeah, really don't no. think the No Shot counts. It's a two. It's a two person race. I hope Who's the Vic wins. I to fucking honest. hope yeah, to God. I, I'll say this: I am with Boatman and Ryshaw on Sunday watching the Oscars. I don't give a shit if. We're in a packed house or in a quiet house, and everyone's asleep. This is the last category that I I will scream if Husevic wins with such excitement because I want it to win and it has a shot. But it does 
Leslie is going to walk out of this with an Oscar one way or another. He's double nominated. This the last the time they double nominated people, it's yeah, it's going to go Leslie. But I do the thing I, Kusa, because of legitimate shot. I know. Sure. Honestly, I might think, change I my pick. I think it's a guarantee. Oh, I don't think it's a guarantee. Oh, I I think think it's going to get reward. People I think, think traditional boring songs are best song very often. <laughs> this song's not even boring to bad, but it is traditional in the sense of what, what Oscars go for. Um, Husevic's weird. It's an outsider's pick. Okay, but it's Husevic not even a weird song. The, it's not, it's, the purpose is weird. Husevic is the one that's on the uptick. Speak Now is dipping a little bit. Um, like, if we go back to our nominations, we were excited and happy with the idea that Husevic would get the five spot and get into this category. I do legitimately think there's a chance that people go, let's vote for the song that's actually part of the movie. That's not, that's Husevic. And, and I think that's a potential to have it. Now, the problem, the doubt, like the, the argument against Husevic is obviously it's a Netflix Comment. movie that no one has seen and it doesn't have a particularly big fan base and came out like months um, ago. And these three people. Big fan base, all they, all, all we they need. know. Okay, but we know we like, we know we like Husevic. We know you like Eurovision. But there's a Euro, there's a Eurovision contingent that really is. Yeah. Yes. Don't worry, on it. We're, we're the probably the loudest. I know. I, I go to conventions every year to the Eurovision Song Contest. Movie I movie. only want to play I I Ding Dong. <laughs> I do think there's also just a potential chance that One Night in Miami really just doesn't have anything. That's fair. And um. I will say that the movie, the, the performances to the pre-show is the only way they're going to get me is because Husevic might perform before the pre-show. Oh, so anyway, I'm, I'm going to watch the pre-show. I'm watching the pre-show for Husevic only. Yeah, that's yep. I mean, yeah. We'll see what happens. Uh, let's jump ahead. We got Best Director. We picked Chloe Zhao to win. Zach and I picked yeah. Edward Emerald Fennell to, to upset. Coho picked David Fincher. We picked Vinterberg to finish last. I think Vinterberg finishing like makes sense. He was kind of lucky to get in the category. Uh, his movie is not as big as it is. Zhao to win is also, I think, pretty self-explanatory. She is yeah. the star of 2020 in some ways. Like She is the person who's gone from indie director to legitimately household big name in a really quick period of time. I will say, for me, I don't think... I don't think Mank has a lot of buzz. I think if anything... That's, is why, take I a, go I, I, that's why I'm with Zach on this. I think if anyone is going to take out Zhao, one, it's going to be a woman. I don't think they're going to give it to the white guy over Zhao. I think that I don't think that's going to happen. And I think that if we're going to be honest, Zhao is a hot new talent, and so yeah. is Fennell. And I think if it doesn't end up Zhao, it's going to end up another like talent who's new. Fincher just feels like he, he's just kind of he's like the old guy who should be kind of happy to be there. Like I don't necessarily think he has a, the buzz to take this category. But I will let Koho make the arc, the counter arc. The reason why I pick Fincher is because I think Xiao is going to win. But if if we live in a bizarre world where Xiao doesn't win, then of course the white guy won. It's the Oscars. Five no, years ago, it, the Oscars so think, white. They, we have very short memory. But white what I'm guy, saying though. is, what I'm saying is, is <laughs> if Fennell, well, Fennell and Chung are in original screenplay, hmm. if they win, I, I think Chung's out of this, to be totally honest. I don't think he's got a yeah. shot to win either. I think Fennell is going to win original screenplay, which means she has no shot at director. I, I honestly, I, I take her there. I think she wins screenplay. They give her the writing one. They don't give her the directing. If Zhao doesn't win, it's Fincher. Because Fincher has been the storyline of Mank since day one. This has been, oh, this is how Fincher wins an Oscar. Mm -hmm. Fincher's making the old Hollywood movie. This is a director's movie. It's not about the performances. It's about how this man is going to bring back the 40s and tell a story about a guy who needs it. Fincher's story is the only one about Mank that matters and even still holds even a little bit of water with this movie. I don't think it's going to happen. But if we're going to discount the clear winner, I think Fincher's the clear two in the sense of he's the only one who has a shot at because if they're not giving it to the correct winner in Zhao, they're giving someone a makeup Oscar. It's Fincher, Maybe. the only previously nominated person in the category. I will make the counter feel that, which is that David Fincher's chance of winning this category died when his dad didn't get a screenplay nomination for the same movie. I and I think, it, yeah. again, I, I also think that I would rather bet on the person who has a much better chance to win Best Picture than Fincher. I guess. If somebody in this, and honestly, I might bet on Chung over Fincher just because I think that Minari and Promising Woman are potential players in Best Picture. Mank is at the bottom of that category with Sound of Metal going, we're glad Maybe. to be here. 
Maybe I'm just still super cynical about the Oscars diversity. Exactly. But like, I, I just, I totally see if we're not going to give it to the deserving winner in Zhao, then we're going to sure. give it to the old white guy who doesn't have one yet. I, I think you made up the Mank story. There is no Mank story. It just doesn't exist. And, and thing. that's why it's not going to win anything. <laughs> Let's jump ahead. We got the last three. All right. Talk about best actor. Which is interesting. I'm terrified. We, all picked, we picked Bozeman to win. Hopkins to upset, Oldman no shot. Now the Oldman pick is really easy. Easy, like, yeah. he honestly, has it. He wants. He's done. Let's be real. That's Delroy Lindo's spot. Get the fuck out, Gary Oldman. <laughs> Delroy Lindo would never be my pick for for no shot because I think Delroy could actually pull a serious upset in this category. No, no, but no, no. I'm, I'm saying that 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 is like no. I agree. People people don't understand why Oldman is in the category, <laughs> no. let alone think Del he has Roy a chance. Lindo. Um, Delroy Lindo. You mean it's the Sean Parks um, shot, but people are, are rude and how they classify movies. Amazon, you screwed up. Um, okay, let's talk about this. Bozeman comes out. Does it, Wait, so refresh me. Does he die before or after the release of this film? Before the release of this movie. So he is. So it comes out. Basically, when it comes out, he has died. This is one of his last chances. If he is, I would argue, even good, he was going to have a decent shot at the Oscar. Just because of the, it's the last chance we have to give it. Now, I think that his it also helps that he was like great. It's like the lead. It's like the ledger. Thing. I I think he might have been the favorite. He wouldn't be the like extreme favorite we have now, but I think he would still be the favorite. I agree. I, he, I think it's. Yeah. I, I think that. I think that there is. You cannot ignore that the percentage of his lead is based on the fact this is the last opportunity sure. for people to reward him. But it, this is this is not a this is not a he gave a shit performance and then died. So we're just going to give it to him because we like it. Um, now, speaking of that, Anthony Hopkins is kind of trying to get a fast lane and bump him at the last second. Now we didn't predict this, but I don't. I feel a lot less confident about Bozeman than I did two months ago. I feel a lot less confident about Bozeman than I did three days ago. I don't. He's got it. I feel. I, I feel I completely his- confident. I, I want Bozeman to win. I hope he wins. I think he's going to win. I am going to believe in the faith. I'm going to put my faith in the Academy that they're going to do the right thing and give Chadwick the Oscar. But the amount of people in the exit interviews that said, oh, Bozeman's going to win. I voted for Hopkins because I know he's not going to win anyway. Was astounding. You cannot That's read into the exit interviews. I, I know. I know I can't. It's a bit need of paranoia. But it's not just the exit interviews. The father push that's happened in the last two weeks is insanity. And it might have hit at the exact right time where Hopkins can bump Bozeman. And if that happens, I'll be pissed because he has one and Bozeman doesn't. And I love Chadwick Bozeman more than life itself. So I I am very hopeful that Chadwick wins. I'm going to predict Chadwick win. He's been winning everything before it. I'm going to hope it happens. Hopkins mm. is the only person who has a shot at upsetting him in this category. Agreed. I do think there's, a, there's an interesting question of Ma Rainey's is is interesting in that it has it has in theory the front runners in two major categories, but, but, no is, but is not and a very big is not and a very all categories. It's, it's like arguably the favorite in all four categories is nominated for. It's True, very it's it's very very weird in, in a way that the, it doesn't make it. It's it's very bizarre because it is not a film that has a lot of buzz. But it does like it has like I don't I don't know what to think uh, with I don't know what to think of Ma Rainey's because all the signs saying like the father should have advantages over Ma Rainey's. but I'm not sure if it does I, I mean I, I think this is one of those categories that we're all going to predict Bozeman but I wouldn't be that in- cra- I wouldn't be that surprised if I wouldn't be that surprised if Hopkins stole it last second. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the last one of the last two. This is a brutal race. <laughs> I don't know what to do here. I'll, I'll go first. I'll, I'll, I'll save you some trouble. Let's, um, let's, let's, let's do one thing. Let's, let's this do one is thing. the one and true crap shoot. Yeah. Vanessa Kirby has out of it. No, no shot. Chance. Done. Watch she's the one that wins because of this crazy fucking year. Anyway. We have a disagreement at number one. We have a disagreement at up that. I picked Viola. 
I want Kerry to win. But I don't know why. Vi- I legitimately thought Viola was third. And now Viola seems to be first. I don't understand what's happening. I also think that this is going to be a very... I feel like this is a category that I will be able to predict for you a lot better halfway through the Oscars. Yeah. Because we're going to go, and it's going to happen, and Promising Woman is going to win screenplay. I'm going to go, okay, it's going to be Carrie. Or Ma Rainey's is going to win a couple of awards. I'm going to go, oh, it's going to be Viola. I don't know. You guys picked Carrie to win. I picked Viola. I picked Carrie to run her up. Coho picked Viola to run her up. Zach went with a crazy outlet out of left field pick. Andrew Day? He picked no. Francis McDormand. Oh, okay. Which is that out of which is which is funny because Th- that's kind of my movie. personal bias dream. I want her to have. Three. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> so it's kind of, well, it's funny in the context of right now. It seems like an out of left field pick. It's not an out of left. But field. three oh. months ago, that was the freaking favorite. Yeah. It doesn't make any yeah. sense. The deal it's with best actor. The deal with best actress here for me is that people think Andrew Day's in it because the Golden Globes. But I think the Golden Globes fucked up and she's not winning no. this at all. No. I think she's out Golden of it. Golden Globes have no voter no. similarities. Exactly. It's a made up award show. That, exactly. You can't redo that at all. McDormand, my my thing is McDormand is going to win Best Picture. She is nominated for Nomadland. She's getting an Oscar this year, and regardless, so she might not win actress for that. But my big my big strategy when it was a three horse race in January was McDormand and Davis are the two people who have won Oscars and they will pull certain groups within the Academy certain ways, which will lead to Mulligan coming in and winning and picking up the pieces with the rest of the Academy who knows she doesn't have one and is the big like thing A promising young woman is carried both by the screenplay and Mulligan. Mm-hmm. And I think those are the two awards promising young woman can totally walk away with that night is actress and screenplay. And I think they're going to do it. I think Carrie Mulligan is like incredible. I think she's the best performance of, of that category. And I think she's going to win on the strength of not having one and it being probably the most flashy performance in that category. Davis has one. Okay. But here's the argument. Davis. Has two. Davis, supporting. Davis can make the Blanchette argument, which is the aviator to blue Jasmine. Sure. And say people don't count necessarily. I don't think McDormand wins because I think the two are going to not. She has two. But the other weird and, thing for me that I was worried about is that she has that. never yeah. lost Best Actress. She is two for two in Best Actress. So she was some. She was in some somewhat weak. She category. should also have a supporting. She was the strongest favorite, Best Actress category say. I've ever seen. Twenty seventeen is yeah. the strongest Best Actress race I've ever seen. This, Ronan, this should be our fault. Ronan, Ronan Hopkins. Uh, uh, oh, McDormand. That's a strong race. This is good. Um, yeah. Can I make my case for McDormand for a second? Yes, please make it. I, can, it. I, I, I think there is two routes they can take on some sort of an anointment. You can anoint Carrie Mulligan as she's one of the best we have now. She deserves an award. It's like almost like a she's due thing for being you know, 34 years old. But it's a, yeah. it, it's, it could be like in its time. But I could also, I think Francis McDormand and what Co is saying is really for how much she does not play in the system and like doesn't live in Hollywood. I think people just see her as, you know, one of the all time defining greats uh, that they want to anoint and put into that. I think Hollywood has so much respect for it. If they want to anoint her as in the level of the streets of the Hepburns, they might be willing to give her a three and say True. and really make a make a point with that. I would say that is the other thing because if it's McDormand, it's history. If it's Mulligan, it's a first, yeah. and if it's Davis, it's another one. Great, great, great for Davis. <laughs> great for Davis. Here's the here's the thing. I, I would actually push back on the McDormand and say I don't think people look at McDormand on that level. I think she people think she's very good. I do not think anyone is going to be out there making a claim that McDormand and Street belong. One of the most dominant awards persons, not just this, but she also no, no. dominated in the Emmys for Alice Carriage. Yeah. She I'm not arguing with you, dominated. I'm not arguing that. I'm saying that. I'm saying that when you have to pick McDormand in this category, you have to, you're going to, it is going to cross people's minds that voting for her is saying she is akin to Meryl Streep. I'm not sure. Sh- that is a really high bar to ask your voting base to vote for. I legitimately She's think that could be a. Meryl Streep. She's clearly not better than Meryl Streep. That's the ridiculous. She's so much better um, than Meryl Streep. I, I no. actually, I put her up in Meryl Streep. I, I don't think. I, I don't think. Okay, you you two are living in the fairyland. I, the the <laughs> the majority of people in the world do not put McDormand and, and Meryl Streep on the same level. Meryl sure. Streep is like that. That is that's those are not comparable names, and I do think that that potentially is the downside for McDormand. I also think another big downside against McDormand is that 
she came on the scene first and then got jumped twice. And I think that I'm not necessarily, I wouldn't feel confident that that person is going to come back and take the award back at the end. Um, True. The argument for Carrie argument is she's the new thing. Davis is, we think she's the best. And she won the SAG. SAG. Which is like, I'm not. Davis won the SAG. McDormand won the BAFTA. BAFTA means nothing though at this point. Like, it doesn't mean that much. Yeah. So. Carrie was a great choice, which really means nothing, but still. Carrie, well, Carrie, Carrie feels like legitimately the person who has the most, most good buzz behind her. But like, it doesn't. Ne- I don't know if that necessarily means anything. Sure. I hope it's Carrie. I'm gonna ride the Carrie wave. I, I'm not gonna change my prediction on that one just because this is such an unpredictable category that I'm just gonna let it ride at this point. I mean, if you look back at the SAG, everyone who has won the SAG has won the Oscar, except for Glenn Close and the wife in 2018. Going yeah. back to literally, I don't think, no, except the other one is 2011 when Viola Davis beat Meryl Streep, but yeah. like, almost literally every other one's a winner. So like that to me is a really strong track record. But you know what you just revealed is that the last time Viola Davis won the SAG, she lost the Oscar. True. I guess is really, that's a real test right there. If your yeah. McDormand is, or Mulligan is anywhere near the Streep. So I would also say that if we're being honest, the Streep is just, I, I don't think you can, I think streep is a variable you cannot calc- you cannot adjust for. Her. That is valid. She's she's in a world of her own. Like, it, I mean, to be honest, if we look at history, she's in a world of her own, and like, Hepburn won as many, but like, I don't think anyone thinks is Hepburn on the same level as Meryl Streep. I think that's Hepburn right. is often considered as the greatest actress of all time. So I think that's bullshit. I, and I, but I think that's also like like um, classic. Yeah. Um, prejudice, like people often will say the best films or best actors are all existed before a time just because of history's purposes rather than actual great, but I think that's easily Kevin Everett's on up there and Meryl Streep's slightly overrated. Um, I just want to say, uh, I'm looking through the filmography of Frances McDormand and I'm just now finding out for the first time that she is in Transformers, Dark Side of the Moon and my fucking yeah. brain is broken. I mean, my heart is broken. <laughs> Everything is destroyed. And Viola Playing Davis mirroring? Is it a robot? Does she play a robot? Is, is that, no, 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 no. She's the head of like the CIA. She's, there's a war. She's like acting out. <laughs> All right, we talked about that. Let's talk about the that. only actress we had that could transform from a car to a robot. Let's talk about the big one. Um, we all picked Nomadland to win. Yeah. Um, Zach and I picked Sound of Metal with no shot. Coho picked Mank. I think Mank and Sound of Metal are sort of equivalent. Yeah. In this category, that one is not big enough and one does not have buzz. I so you guys picked Trial of the Chicago Seven as your runner-up. You pick Promising Young Woman, or you? Pick I picked I, I picked Promising Young Woman, okay. which I think I, I I'll make the argument. Promising Young Woman has okay. The these films are very similar in that they're going to have a lot of ones and a lot of eights. Yeah, and the question is, can one? Have can one have a better ratio of that? No Man Land. The argument for No Man Land winning is that No Man Land is going to be top three for everyone. And top three, maybe the, top four at worst. Right, but that's like the really argument. Really heard it. It's just about people that have it up high. Yeah. No, but that's like the, the thing is they don't want to have ones. <laughs> no, but you don't. But like it, with reapportionment, you don't want to be the film that finishes low a lot. It's just not good. Because, my, my because if you because if you finish eighth and they cancel the eights, yeah. you don't gain anything. Other movies do. Yeah. My thing is, I I don't I think yeah, my big issue is I I feel like this is done with Nomadland, and part of me thinks that I think we might we're in a situation like last year where 1917 won every single precursor best picture and lost, and mm-hmm. I am in a weird state where I don't know if we're in the it's cleaning up because it's going to win or it's cleaning up and about to choke at the end. But I think uh, I'm going to lean towards it's going to win. I don't see anyone really having a great chance at beating it besides promising young woman in trial. And both of those are, have had such a weird controversy in the last like month. So can, it's I make like, a, can I make an argument? If, if we're looking for the parasite to upset 1917 Minari promising a woman fits that way more than trial. Oh. Chicago seven does As I said, um, trial with Chicago seven is very much an establishment That's film. Fine. Charlie Terry 7 is a lot more like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood upsetting or something. If you want the kind of outsider, super hot, super one. passionate That's, fan base. I would not say Promising Young Woman is the parasite. I would say Minari is the parasite. 
I like Menard is the would. direct is the no, direct. I, I think no I think Paris is the parasite, and that's why it's the favorite because Parasite won. So but Parasite won, Parasite didn't win a single precursor Best Picture except for tying Best or not. No, I know, Parasite won think, Best Picture once before the Oscars. Change. But we're not we're not thinking. But Zach, I think you're thinking of it in the context of what Parasite is, rather than what context it plays in the in the in the battle. Like Nomadland right now is the establishment it's, front runner, like 1917. I just I I think if a movie is going to come out of don't say the word establishment with Nomadland. That's not what you mean. But it is establishment. Establishment means like the old okay, established, Hollywood movie before it. Established. Okay, thank established you. Established yeah, front better. runner. It's the established, rewarded front runner who has all who basically is sitting over going looking. I have all of these now. Just give me the last one. If a film is coming out of nowhere, I thought it was going to be Minari for a bit. But I have not seen the push for Minari in Best Picture the way I have the, I've seen in Supporting Actress. I just – I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm saying that I could see a scenario where Promising a Woman wins screenplay, Carrie wins, Fennel upsets Zhao, and then suddenly we have – and then we go, oh, crap. Promising a Woman is like going to completely sweep across the board and take Best Picture. I could see that. I don't really – I understand the argument for Travis Kevin. I just don't see it as likely – because if Chicago it, Seven it, wins, it'll be the first time that it won Best Picture without a director nomination since what Argo? Yeah, yeah. Here's my defense. For that's it. a weird. One, that's a weird year too. That's a weird year too. There's well, no front because no front. Front, right? Woman no, Ray would be crazy. Promising Young Woman is, I would say, <laughs> more even more kind of genre film than Parasite is in a lot of ways. That it'll be kind of crazy if it, it wins. It has a little bit of a campiness that some people might not take serious. Um, oh, I agree. And that's, I think, it's grateful. Um, my main thing why I took Trial as my second is I just don't think we ever should underestimate the old white boat that still exists. I think sure. there's a lot of young hit movies that are nominated that shows the change and the trend that I think are going to take that fan base and divide it. Uh, but they will get a lot of middle grounds. I think Promising Young Woman is going to share a lot of those that might also vote for Judas or Sound of Metal or Nomadland or Minari. I think Trial, Maybe. the only thing it's sharing with is probably the father. But it is really... Uh, Mank you know, probably too. Get a lot. Mank a little bit. But but the the old the establishment will be voting for Trial of Chicago 7. Yeah. Uh, here's the one argument I make against that, which is that if you look at recent years, the old white green book... book is, <laughs> this is the green book. Listen, <laughs> but the old white folk pick is typically the front runner, not the pick that jumps it last minute. True. Green Book was not the front runner. Green Book was the front runner was for the a really runner. long time. It was okay. the front runner. I think just we, not last no, no. second. I think Roma seemed like Ro it Roma. Go. Roma came back in like January, February to be the front runner because everyone discredited Green Book because that we three really big no, controversies. Nobody wanted to acknowledge Green Book as the front runner. Although, if you look back at that award race. It was obviously it was, the front. Runner. It was pretty clearly the front runner. We just cut like nobody wanted to acknowledge that we could go from moonlight to green. Green. Um, I, that's my argument. I think that's what we're doing things. now. I think we're doing the same thing with Parasite to Trial by Chicago Seven. I think Nomadland, whether they're winning a lot of stuff, but I think it early on became the front runner because they're like the the Academy has changed. They're going for these you know more modern movies, these more relevant movies because of Parasite. They're all thinking about memory. Do I think we're now underestimating Trial like we underestimated Green Book based on the previous runners? I'll, I'll just say right now, if Trial wins, I'll be happy. Like, <laughs> I, I really like Trial Sky. So. <laughs> and that could um, be pissed because it's an award show and it's just for fun. True. And that could be pissed yeah. by anything, Winnie. Life moves on. Yeah. Yeah, basically. I think, that, I think the craziest thing for Trial would just be a movie that wins Best Picture after winning basically nothing. The best second best award for your best picture winner is like screenplay. That would be pretty funny to watch. Um, I'd be I would be hypocritical for a second, because um, I, I think there is one way I get legitimately mad, and that's if Glenn Close wins. And I haven't seen that movie. I'm just pretty mad about the idea of Hillbilly Elegy. Honestly, I'm mad honestly, about, if know. anything is going to win from Hillbilly Elegy, Glenn Close is not bad in the film. She's not if, if Amy Adams got nominated for him, I would be livid because she's legitimately terrible in the movie. I don't know. We'll see. Those are our Oscar picks. We did goofy, st we did goofy stuff. I would this not. shit's going to be wild, folks. I think that all of us are going to change like three or four picks for our final Oscar <laughs> pool on Sunday. Nah, uh, I I'm might, done. <laughs> I think I legitimately might change three of my short picks um, by Sunday. We may see that happen. Wait, um, can, you, can you share what the bet is? 
because I forgot. That you got to tell the audience. The winner of the bet gets to pick a movie that we do a commentary for. Okay, so we do do the Ben Button. I didn't think you agreed to this. No, I didn't agree to Ben Button. I agreed that the winner would pick a commentary. You tried yes, to make it, the- and that's tried- what I'm picking if I win. I know, but you, you can't you originally. You, you, can't pick it. you originally pitched this to me as we will watch Ben and Button and do a commentary <laughs> for the Oscar bet. And I said, no, we will let the winner pick a movie. I win. The winner picks a movie. I'm not saying we watch what it no would, matter what. Oh, if you won an Oscar bet, what movie would you make us do a commentary for? Oh, Hamilton? you know No, Jonah, a VeggieTales movie. We're going to sit down and I'm going to make uh, the three of us watch Jonah, a VeggieTales movie. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know what I make us watch. My original idea, Coho, that he shot down was I said, you got to pick a movie and the other people can only say positive comments the whole time. I, I oh, hated this idea. I hated this idea so much. Because I was like, that is going to be terrible podcasting because if you make me watch a movie I don't like and then you make me only say positive stuff, no. I'm just going to not say anything <laughs> for like no, the majority of the gonna, time. No, because you're a professional and you don't like that air, so you're going to be searching your hardest to find the bright spots. And it's going to make you look at the movie differently. This was my dream. Zach, this is not going to happen. I will, I'm a professional <laughs> podcaster. I am not a person who is going to look for the positive in something I hate. No, um, you don't know if you truly hate it. That's if you look at it through a different perspective. This is this is the Zach Ford um, ridiculous optimism bubbling up here. <laughs> well, I like I'm the one because I'm not an asshole, cynic like you. I like love. Oh, do you like the the whatever the hell that title is, Benjamin Button movie? I've never seen the Curious Case of Benjamin Button. You really don't. It's not worth it. I honestly really feel like you may like it. <laughs> it's really long. It's really long. See, like I don't, really I don't like, I don't like brutally long movies that feel like they're forty hours. Like it, it feels like it's forty hours. Okay. Nah, it feels like it's um, forty minutes of pure loveliness. I will say this with, I will say this to back and go. I have to say when I see a movie that's really long, like you need to have a real hook for me to like. Yeah. choose to sit down and watch that. It goes and, um, through the whole man's life. The Hulk, he ages fucking backwards. It's a Hulk. <laughs> yeah, but also, most people think it's like the worst or second worst David Fincher film. It's also based on a story that's literally like seven pages long. <laughs> This is this, <laughs> this is what Zach. This is the only reason Zach likes this is this is Zach story. Ford's movie making process. Process is I'd be like Zach, we need you to make a movie. Here's a five page children's book, and Zach would come back with a six hour cut of this thing. I'd be like, we really need the seventy five minute tracking shot in the middle. We watch the dog. Um, yeah, let's wrap this up. Um, we did picks. Enjoy these picks. Uh, we will be back next week to react to the winners. With some group of people. Coho may be here. Ooh. He may be eaten by aliens. Um, Me too. Maybe cows will get him. Who knows? Sean the Sheep is going to come break my kneecaps for saying he's the worst one of the five nominees. <laughs> and you would deserve it. I do Zach, deserve it. Me and Zach would not be sad because Sean the Sheep is probably not the worst in this category. Actually, Sean the Sheep, better than Onward. I'm going to tell you that. Oh, God. Right okay. Now, I liked Sean the Sheep. Okay. Onward is really boring. And not that interesting. Um, which is and now the Pixar people will try to come and break my knees, but guess what? You guys are all weak and you don't have any hammers, so you can't hurt me. <laughs> He's got thick neck muscles, you don't know if his leg muscles are even thicker. <laughs> yeah. How do you think these leg this neck? One fourth the size of my legs. <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks. Thank you, Caleb. Thank you, Zach. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed watching this and uh yeah. Let's fucking Oscar it up, baby. Peace out.